With around 10,000 species of birds described in the world, estimates suggest that between 2,000 and 10,000 are yet to be described. Some birds are prolific and can be found across a wide range and in a huge variety of habitats. For example, the peregrine falcon can be found from Alaska to Patagonia, from Scandinavia to Southern Africa, from Siberia to Southeast Asia and Australia. They can be found living in a wide variety of habitats, including major city centers. But some birds aren't so lucky. Many species are restricted to very limited ranges. This can be because of diet, specific habitat needs, or geographical limitations like mountain ranges or islands. Sometimes, birds decrease in numbers because of incredible ecological pressures from humans, such as hunting, deforestation, or the introduction of pests like rats, dogs, and cats. In the last 500 years, we've recorded about 150 bird extinctions, mostly on islands. But this number is likely not a true reflection of the actual number of lost species. At times, species disappear before we even get a chance to record them. On top of this, there are many species that aren't currently listed as extinct, yet haven't been seen in over a decade, at times even over a century. In order to be declared extinct, a species needs to have not been seen for over 50 years and have had extensive surveys done to confirm that it no longer exists in the wild. In 2021, the Search for Lost Birds released a list of what it called the top 10 most wanted bird species. The species on this list haven't been seen in over a decade with two of them only ever having been seen once. This is a collaboration with the American Bird Conservancy, Rewild, and BirdLife International to raise awareness of lost species and encourage birders to help them discover if these birds are in fact still alive. The hope is that by rediscovering these species, their environments will be protected and that awareness will be raised of the plights of endangered species around the world. In today's video, we're going to look at these 10 unique birds. Where were they found? Why haven't they been seen in so long? Is there any hope of their ongoing survival? And which ones have been rediscovered since this list was released? Welcome to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's entertaining and educational. If you like this kind of content, then please consider liking the video, leaving a comment, and even subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate your support. In 1848, British naturalist Thomas C. Jerdon described a new species of wading bird in the Godavari River Valley in southeastern India. It had two brown breast bands and a chestnut-colored throat patch. On top of its head, it had a white crown stripe. The bird was named after him, but locals called it Kalivi Kodi in the Telugu language. It was found and researched a few more times over the coming decades, but noted to be extremely rare because of its limited geographical range. The birds preferred areas with high, dense bushes, and being nocturnal, they were very difficult to find. In 1917, an egg was collected that was assumed to belong to Jordan's courser, but this was the last evidence of the bird for 80 years. In fact, the Bronx Zoo in New York erected a tombstone for Jordan's courser, assuming its probable extinction. However, in 1986, the species was rediscovered thanks to local trappers, and subsequently known only in a single wildlife reserve in Andhra Pradesh. It was studied several times over the next 20 years, but by 2008, sightings had dried up. Multiple searches have been undertaken, but they have all failed to find the bird. The IUCN currently lists Jordan's courser as being critically endangered, and it's threatened by rising human population, agricultural pressures, and the possibility of the Godavari River being diverted to meet the increasing demand for fresh water by the city of Chennai. In 
In the mid-19th century, American ornithologist John Casson described a new species of raptor on the island of Cuba. For many years, some assumed that the Cuban kite might just be a subspecies of the hook-billed kite, which is found on the mainland of North and Central America, as well as other Caribbean islands. However, recent genetic research has confirmed that it merits its status as a unique species. Being smaller than the hook-billed kite, male Cuban kites are gray overall, with white and gray bars on the chest and underparts, while females have more brown in their feathers. They have a yellow bill, another feature that distinguishes them from other kite species. In the last 40 years, it has been only seen a handful of times. The last verified sighting was in 2010 in Alejandro de Humboldt National Park. The main reason it has declined is because of forest degradation and destruction. Humans have also overharvested the snails that these birds rely on as their primary source of food. Apparently, it also has a very tame nature, so was easily persecuted by local hunters and farmers who feared that they posed a threat to their livestock. If it is still alive, it's most likely hiding deep in the Alejandro de Humboldt National Park in the southeast corner of Cuba. Described in 1788, the South Island Kokako is a medium-sized bird whose Latin name means ash-colored. Its most distinctive feature is the orange wattles on either side of the beak, which distinguish it from the North Island variety, whose wattles are blue. It had a unique call. In fact, an early European explorer to the region described its call as the sweetest and most mellow tone he had ever heard produced perhaps sounding similar to its North Island cousin, which sounds like this. Long considered the same species as the North Island Kakako, genetic testing has revealed it to be distinct. While the North Island Kakako is still present today, studies have shown that by the time Europeans arrived to New Zealand, the South Island Kakakos range had already been drastically reduced by Polynesian settlers to the same area. It was further reduced by the introduction of mammalian pests by Europeans. After 1967, the bird wasn't spotted for 40 years, before a final accepted sighting was confirmed in 2007. A charitable trust has been set up in hopes of encouraging New Zealanders to get out and look for the bird. If anyone is able to produce a photograph or a video of the South Island Kakako, a 10,000 New Zealand dollar reward is being offered. They have produced a map of the best locations to look for it and encourage anyone who finds themselves walking through forests on the western side of the South Island or Stewart Island to keep their eyes open. The Negros fruit dove is one of the birds on this list that is only known from a single sighting. In 1953, two ornithologists spotted a pair of small green doves on the slopes of Mount Canlaon on Negros Island in the Philippines. The common scientific practice when new species are being described is to collect specimens for future study. So, both of the birds were shot for collection. The female was gathered but sadly, the male was lost in the undergrowth of the forest. This was particularly unfortunate because in order to classify fruit doves, the feathers of the male need to be closely examined. The Negros fruit dove is a small bird, measuring less than 17 centimeters in length. It has bright green feathers with some yellow on the wings as well as a yellow eye ring. On the forehead and under the beak, it has small light gray patches of feathers. It's believed to prefer lowland forests, which are essentially gone from Negros Island today. When the birds were discovered, they were at 1,100 meters and believed to have been pushed to those elevations due to human encroachment. By 1988, only 4% of Negros Island was still forested. Today, the tiny amount of remaining forest is under constant threat of being cleared for agriculture. 
Two unconfirmed sightings of the doves happened in 1985 and in 2008. In both instances, hunters claim to have shot one of the birds. But today, if this bird is still alive, it's unlikely to be on Negros Island. In 1990, two other birds that were believed to only live on Negros Island were found to also be living on nearby Panay Island, the bleeding heart pigeon and the white-throated jungle flycatcher. Panay Island has much more of its forest intact, so it's possible that the seclusive Negros fruit dove is still hiding out there. During the Victorian era, Europe saw a growing obsession with science and scientific collections. Many educated and high society people kept collections of insects, taxidermy, and feathers. At times, even living animals were collected from abroad and brought to live on the estates of the aristocracy. In 1846, British zoologist John Edward Grey was visiting the Earl of Derby at Knowsley Hall he noticed that the Earl had a couple of interesting live birds in his collection. A pair of medium-sized quails with longer than normal tails. The male had a red beak and white spots near the eyes. The female was brown with dark streaks and a gray brow. Upon asking the Earl about their origin, he simply told Gray that they had been purchased from India. The Himalayan quail was scientifically described, but their exact origin was still unknown. 20 years later, in 1865, the first pair of wild Himalayan quails were collected at an elevation of 1,800 meters in the mountains of northern India. In 1867, five more were collected. And finally, in 1876, one last specimen was collected on the slopes of Shur Kadanda at 2,100 meters. And that was it. The birds were never seen again. While they were assumed extinct for a long time, the species was known to be elusive. The habitat they had initially been discovered in has been heavily altered by human activity, but it's believed to possibly still be extant. The Himalayan quail occupies a similar habitat to another species of pheasant, the Himalayan monal. It's believed that the quails may still be holding on up in the slopes of the Himalayas, and that future searches for the species should focus on south-facing slopes where Himalayan monals also live. This is another species on the list that is only known from one specimen ever collected. In 1955, a female nightjar was discovered and described. Nightjars are nocturnal insectivores that are generally extremely cryptic in their coloration. The Atomboy nightjar, also known as Prigogene's nightjar, differs from other species in its family in that it's relatively small at only 19 centimeters, with a short tail and large head. It's dark brown with heavy speckling and white tips on the tail feathers. Little is known about the species. It's assumed to be a forest dweller and likely nests on the ground like other members of the order. No other evidence of their existence has been recorded except for unidentified bird calls at night that many believe are made by this bird. In the 90s, vocalization recordings were made in the Democratic Republic of Congo as well as neighboring Gambia and Cameroon. It's believed that these are all recordings of the Atonboy nightjar, greatly increasing their possible range. 
current estimates are that the population sits at around 10,000 individuals. It's still listed as endangered, and it's under threat from deforestation, especially for agricultural purposes. With 366 known species, hummingbirds are the smallest birds on Earth. Found only in North and South America, these beautifully colored birds are known all over the world for their incredible ability to hover as they feed, mostly from flowers. Even with new species being found every few years, we're at risk of losing nearly 8% of all known hummingbird species. 28 species of hummingbird are currently listed as endangered or critically endangered, and one such species is the Santa Marta saberwing. Described in 1879, the Santa Marta saberwing measures 13 centimeters in length. The males have bright emerald green bodies, a black face, a bright blue throat, and a black bill. Their range is limited to the slopes of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta in northeastern Colombia. In the dry season, they were known to visit low elevations, ascending to above 1,800 meters in the wet season. Considered relatively common in the 19th century, they were only seen a few times between 1900 and 1946, when the sightings stopped entirely. But amazingly, in 2010, the bird was recorded again. But once again, it was lost. In 2021, it was added to this list in the search for lost birds. And amazingly, only a year later, in 2022, a young biologist named Jürgen Vega took a photo of a hummingbird he saw while surveying bird species in the area. The sighting was a complete surprise. When I first saw the hummingbird, I immediately thought of the Santa Marta saberwing. I couldn't believe it was waiting there for me to take out my camera and start shooting. I was almost convinced it was the species, but because I felt so overcome by emotion, I preferred to be cautious. It could have been the lazuline saberwing, which is often confused with the Santa Marta saberwing. But once we saw the pictures, we knew it was true. The Santa Marta saberwing has officially been rediscovered. While this is of course a success in the search for lost birds, the species is still highly threatened and in desperate need of protection if we want to ensure its ongoing survival. Scops owls are small, typical, old-world owls that are generally brown with excellent abilities to camouflage. There are 59 known species of Scops owl, two of which are only known from bones and are already extinct. A third species which may also be extinct, is the Xiao Scops Owl. In 1866, a single specimen was collected on the island of Xiao, north of Sulawesi, Indonesia. It was named as a new species, though there is still debate as to whether it is a distinct species or just a subspecies of the Sulawesi Scops Owl or the Moluccan Scops Owl. Since its initial discovery, it hasn't had any official sightings. Search efforts for the owl have essentially been unsuccessful, with only a few mysterious vocalization recordings to tease scientists. When local people were interviewed on the island of Xiao in 1995, many claimed that about 20 years prior, the owl had been common, but that now it was a rare sight. Then, in 2017, a video surfaced on YouTube on the channel Rano Digital Studio. The description which is in Indonesian, reads, perched in front of the Ampera Ulu Siao market stall on the 11th of December, 2017. It was found by Mr. Sidik Usulu and released again to protect it from extinction.
This market is located on the edge of the town of Ulu, on the east side of Xiao Island. More work needs to be done to determine if the owl in the video matches the specimen that was collected 150 years ago. As of right now, it's believed that if the species is still holding on, its population is minute, probably numbering less than 50 individuals. The majority of Sao Island has been deforested, and today, most of the island has been converted into agricultural land or scrubland. Madagascar is a hotspot of diversity. 90% of the species on the island live nowhere else on Earth, and scientists keep finding new species. Just in the last 30 years, 150 new species have been described on the island, including lemurs, chameleons, and trees. In 1925, a new species of warbler was described in the African island nation. Given the name of Dusky Tetraca in English, the bird was found at higher elevations, up the side of a mountain. It was generally olive green in color, with a yellow throat and eye ring. The call is a high sheet given singly or in a rapid series. It was only known from a handful of sites in the northeastern part of the country. In 1999, the last recorded sighting of the bird occurred but scientists believe that it was likely still holding on somewhere on the slopes near Tanambao municipality. In 2021, it was put on the 10 most wanted birds list and renewed interest in finding the species was sparked. At the end of December, 2022, a team from the Peregrine Fund's Madagascar program set out to the remote mountainside where the dusky tetraca was last seen over 20 years ago. The forested area was protected, so it seemed like a good place to start. Sadly, upon arrival, it was discovered that most of the forest had been cleared for vanilla plantations, despite its protected status. They spent five days there searching for the bird before giving up and descending to lower elevations. After three more days of searching, on January 1st, 2023, a single bird was spotted and photographed. Over the coming days, three dusky tetrakas were captured and tagged. It seems that the bird actually prefers lowland forests, areas with thick vegetation on the edge of rivers, which explains why they had been so hard to find. The team plans to return later this year to see if they can learn more about their breeding habits. The lowland forests where the bird is found are under extreme pressure from logging for agricultural development. So, while it has been rediscovered, the species is still under a high risk of extinction. And that's it for today's video. Which of these birds do you think is most likely still alive? 
And are there any that you think we probably lost? If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and maybe even share it with a friend. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon for notifications. I also created a Patreon page recently, and I got my first ever patron. So I want to say a huge thank you to Kasha for helping me make this video possible. Kasha, did I mention that you and your boys are the best? Thank you for always supporting the channel. And if you want to support the creation of these videos, click the Patreon link in the video description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.